Hi again everyone, uh, welcome back to another lesson video. So today I'm going to go through the uh, Alan Holsworth song, Letters of Mark. Uh, this song I don't think is really too bad, it's going to be a little bit longer than I thought because uh, I want to add the solo section as well. Um, there's some parts that repeat over and over again in a section, so when I repeat them I'm just going to go through them very quickly, but when I first talk about them I'll go a little bit slower. Uh, make sure I get as much information as possible. Okay, so uh, let's get started. The first chord of the song is a third inversion B major triad. And Alan plays this diatonically uh, one for your first, second, and third degree. So B major, C sharp minor, D sharp minor, adding in the flat seven, the C sharp, and then moving your root and fifth down a half step. Now making it a D major seven, which is now your new one chord because uh, then it goes to E minor 7, F sharp minor 7, now it pivots to E major, which is your new 1 chord because then it goes to F sharp minor, G sharp minor, adding in the flat 7, and then moving the root and 5th down again to get G major 7. So that's the first section. For this section, Alan takes this uh, static chord voicing, which is uh, pretty difficult for me to grab, especially with this guitar where I have uh, no range. Uh, I think of it as a G sharp 9 sus 4. So I got my root, your 4, your flat 7, and your 9 here. You can also think of it as an F sharp major triad with a G sharp in the bass. You can also move the G sharp an octave higher to the D string. Uh, I can't really reach that because of the axis I have here, but this is the way that Alan plays it. And he uses this shape going down, F sharp to uh, G sharp to F sharp, then an octave down. Now you go to a variation of that first section again with the B major triad, and then here you stop. You add the 11 on the top, the B, and then you move your root and fifth down and get this F major seven sharp 11 chord, which I think is my favorite voicing ever. Then from there, you move to some of these stranger chords, uh, C sharp minor major 7 sharp 11, or C sharp, uh, C major triad with the C sharp at the bass, the flat 9, then these two weird ones. Uh, you can think of them as two ways. If you think of it as the root on the low E string, you have um, a 7 sus 4 with the flat 9, the uh, B, uh, this would be a um, C7 sus4 flat 9 chord, or you can think of it as a B flat minor with the add 9 on the bottom. Uh, so uh, B flat minor with the C in the bass. And then you can move this down here. Once again, treating your the, lead, uh, the E string as your root, you would have a 1 flat 7 and then your 2, 7 sus2 with a sharp 11. Or a um, A flat augmented triad with the 9 in the bass, or B flat in the bass and then F major 13 or uh, first inversion uh, D minor and 9. This is also in Tulio. Then it goes to, well, this chord is also in Tulio, uh, major 7 sharp 5 voicing, C major 7 sharp 5, and you move this down to B flat and then A flat. Now you go into the E Lydian minor section. Alan talks about this in his, in his uh, instructional video where he sometimes likes to pick a particular voicing or a particular set of intervals and play them diatonic uh, within a key. The problem with these uh, naming these chords is that we use tertiary harmony, which is uh, harmony built in thirds. That's where we get our chord names from. And once you step away from there, it's a lot harder to call the chords or give them a specific name. Like if you wanted a chord that had the notes uh, 1, 4, 6, and 7. It would be kind of hard to really give that a, a nice chord name with it. And it makes it even harder when you take that chord and you apply it to a more unusual scale like melodic minor or harmonic major. Uh, but this is what Alan does here. He thinks of this whole part as an E Lydian minor, which is your f the fourth degree of B harmonic major. Uh, so the underlying drone that the bass is playing is an E. But I'm going to call the root of all these notes... Uh, what the D string is doing, and you'll see why. So 
For this particular voicing, Alan's using the first, fourth, fifth, and third uh, degrees of Lydian minor. So you'd have an E minor triad, E, B, and G, and then you're adding the sharp 11 here. So E minor with an add sharp 11, and you move that to the second degree, and you have an F sharp major triad with an add 11. You can also think of this, if it's easier, as a B sus 2 triad with a major 7 on top. So uh, uh, B major 7 sus 2. Back to that first chord again. And then this chord. Now this is what I was saying before, how names become strange. If you keep that same interval grouping where you consider this your root and then this the 4, and then this is the 5 and this is the 3, then you would have an E flat minor triad, but then with a flat 11. And I don't think you'll ever really see that in music, because uh, it's just something that's very awkward. Uh, the easiest way to think of this is you can swap the minor third and the major third, and think of this as an E flat major with the minor third on top or the sharp nine. So um, it's probably easier to name this chord an E flat major with an add sharp nine. And you get this strange chord, which is uh, if you consider this your root, C sharp, then you have a C sharp diminished chord, diminished triad, with an add 11. This is also the same kind of voicing as an E minor 6 over 9 chord that we did in Pug Blood. Uh, the next voicing group, it's like that second chord in the in this section, which is a uh, B major with an add 11, or you can think of it again as an E major 7 sus 2, and you have this little melody on top. Down a half step. Now you have a A sharp diminished chord with an A11. Once again, C, you can also give this a C sharp minor six over nine. And then this chord, which uh, you would have a G augmented triad here, and adding the sharp eleven. And then you move the D sharp, the sharp five, to the six. Uh, you can also think of this chord as a, as a static chord, as a seven sharp five but then you're moving the root up a half step and that doesn't really make too much sense. So that's the E Lydian minor section. Then it goes back to the first section again with the B major triad. Once again, instead of doing the, um, the 9 sus 4 chords up here, Alan takes that same voicing shape, that same chord shape, and then moves it up the neck. So you get F sharp, uh, 9 sus 4 to G sharp, A sharp to C, C sharp to D sharp, and then E to F sharp. All the way back down to the B major triad, but now the, the, um, the variation of it. Repeat it the same way. changes a little bit right before the solo section. Uh, Alan plays a B6 chord and then takes your first finger on the G sharp, the 6, and moves it to the flat 7, making it a B7 chord. And then of course if you're adding the, the open E, to, you're adding the 11, then you take that 6 shape, this is really physically challenging, and uh, move it up from C to D, and then E back to D. That's what he does. Doesn't do, doesn't do that all the time, but that's what's going on there. Uh, and now it's time for the solo section. So um, I'll cover that now. All right, so what makes this part a little bit difficult to teach is that when Alan's playing these solo sections, or he's uh, playing the chords behind someone else soloing, he likes to think of these chords as part of a key. Um, not necessarily a static voicing like you would in uh, in the head of a song or one of his songs, and I think he says that in his, in his uh, instructional video. Uh, so there's a lot of improvisation going on, so he's not always playing the same chord exactly the same way every time, but this is the general idea that I see him play. So the first chord is a E flat minor 9, then he goes to a G major triad with an add sharp 11, a D major 7, kind of a hard stretch here, and then a uh, B flat major triad with an add sharp 11, 
Uh, what's really cool is I sometimes see him play this, which is the same chord but with the sharp 11 down here, your root, uh, and then you have your major 7. It's basically the same, uh, same kind of idea. Uh, and then from there, plays this chord, which uh, you can think of as an F sharp minor 7 with an add flat 13, but um, I don't really particularly like that. I think it's probably easier to think of this as a um, D major 9 chord. So you have a D, your third, F sharp, A, and then you have your major 7, and then you have your, uh, your 9. And then he goes to a this chord, this I'm not entirely sure about, I see and hear him play this sometimes with a C sharp on the top, but when he's improvising, he's playing something in C minor here, and uh, this note is just not going to jive with it. On the record, he's playing this, which is a F minor 13, which definitely makes uh, more sense instead of uh, putting the C sharp there. So uh, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with this uh, F minor 13 chord. And then after that, uh, this is another thing that Alan does when he's uh, soloing uh, or playing the chords underneath uh, someone else soloing is he doesn't pick a particular chord or voicing. Sometimes he just improvises in a particular key and that's what happens here. Uh, the key would be D major or really uh, E Dorian, uh, but he's not playing any specific chords. He's just playing sort of random different voicings in the key of uh, D major. Uh, one of the things that Alan likes to do sometimes, I'll see him, and you might see this in videos, is he'll do something like if this, in, if he's playing in D, he'll do, he'll play the 3, the 4, and the 5, which is basically like doing uh, D major 7, an upper voicing of D major 7, and, um, and then a minor 7 and a minor 7. Uh, you see him do that a lot, but at this point, he's just improvising in D. Then it now switches to um, C sharp minor nine to a B major with an add uh, B major add nine with an add sharp eleven. Just he's not playing the the root note. The bass is playing the root note here. He's just thinking of this particular chord shape, but wants to add the sharp eleven. You don't have your finger to be able to play both notes. That would be pretty difficult. Well, I kind of did it, but this is what he does. Uh, then after that, he plays this really crazy chord. Which, of course, is not crazy for him. Um, this is the same major 7 voicing as before, but now you're playing it on the top 4 strings instead of the middle 4 strings. But you can take this and you can play it here. Uh, so this is an F sharp major 7. And then he moves to A major with an add sharp 11. Then from there goes to B flat minor nine to a, a C sharp major seven. I've even pl seen Alan play the uh, jazz 101 version of a major seven chord. Um, and then from there uh, he plays something diatonic to the key of E major for uh, two measures. Then it repeats again, but that last section has an alternate ending. So once again the E flat minor. Improv in uh, E Dorian, and then goes back to the C sharp minor nine, and then here, where it changes, is that you play this chord again for another beat, or you, of course, you can play the the more interesting way, you play it for another beat. Then you go to the to, to the B flat minor nine, and then uh, C uh, C sharp major seven, and now you improvise something in G major for two uh, two measures, and then from there you go back to the uh, Lydian minor section. But Alan doesn't play the top note; he just plays the uh, the bottom three notes. whole solo section and then that whole thing repeats that's what the bass is improvising over uh, and the guitar um, 
and that's it. And those chords are pretty unique to that part of the song. The only thing that's from the song earlier is obviously the um, harmonic major part. Uh, and that's it. And then it goes on to, after everyone's done improvising and the drums are done, it goes to the ending section, which is slightly different from the intro section. And I'll go over that really quickly now. Okay, so right after the drum solo section, it goes right to the E Lydian minor part. Then it repeats back to the beginning, but with a slightly different ending. right into instead of going to the um, major seven sharp five parts he goes right into the uh, ascending nine uh, sus four chords and that's where it changes a little bit back to the intro section but now you go back to the B part but now you play the other notes on top so you play B major seven uh, C sharp minor seven, D sharp minor seven, add the eleven there, and then D major seven sharp eleven. Then you've got the uh, the uh, minor major seven sharp eleven chords. That part, and here's the ending. At this point, uh, there's really no specific chord. Alan just plays something in E major. I think on the record he ends on um, does something like this, and then just brings the bar up. Um, that's it. So um, that's the whole song. I hope you liked the video. Once again, uh, if you enjoy it, like, uh, send me a comment. Um, yeah, and let me know if you'd like to see other songs. And uh, I'll see you next time.